Hi there, it's Bill with Smart Trades. It's October 26, 2010, around 10.15 Pacific Time. And uh, today we're going to look at the Dow, the S&P, the Euro FX, and the dollar. Um, right off the top, here's the uh, Dow chart. And uh, these charts, some of them are a bit dated. Uh, I put them in my uh, newsletter yesterday. And uh, not a whole lot has changed in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to go with these charts. Uh, here's our longer term count, intermediate term count on the Dow. I want to bring your attention to a couple of things on this chart. First off, uh, the length of B in respect to time relative to the decline uh, off the April highs, uh, i.e. wave A, has now reached about 1.62. In other words, A is 1.62 times uh, the length of B in respect to time. Uh, I think that's important to note for a variety of reasons. I'm not that much into uh, Fibonacci uh, time ratios. However, uh, the point is that uh, this market has taken a lot longer, 1.62 to be exact, to uh, to cover that distance on the upside than it did on the downside. To me, that implies that this is likely a corrective rally, as uh, we've been saying all along. Uh, time will tell if that's true or not, but uh, that's my belief. And uh, uh, as it turns out right here, uh, right now, we are just approaching uh, the ideal target for a B wave basis, the Dow. Uh, uh, again, that's the 11,258 level. Um, also, let's bring your attention to the ADX pattern. Uh, we have both in the, uh, just before the April highs, about a month or so before the April highs, we had an extreme ADX, and from there it trended lower. Obviously, we had the uh, flash crash and the decline down uh, off of those highs. We have that exact same ADX pattern right now. Uh, where we hit an extreme, and it's been about a month, a little over a month now, since that extreme, and from there the ADX, this black line, has been trending lower. Uh, I've seen this pattern uh, on various time frame charts, uh, literally uh, many thousands of times, and uh, generally speaking, it's uh, an indication that at least uh, a correction of some magnitude uh, relative to the uh, to the rally is uh, is is in the cards, and that's where I think we're at now. I think we're getting very close to at least a corrective decline, more likely, uh, again, a C wave down, which could catch uh, some folks by surprise. Uh, also, I'd like to note here two similar uh, magnitude corrections highlighted in the, uh, the gray area here. Uh, to my way of thinking, uh, that's, uh, those are uh, wave two and wave four corrections, which indicates that perhaps we are in a fifth wave now and that the pattern is nearing uh, termination. Here are indeed those labels and also the breadth ratios. You may remember back in late August, we were looking for a rally based on uh, bullish breadth divergences on the daily chart. Well, we have just the opposite pattern, a mirror image, if you will, right now at these, uh, at these recent highs. And so uh, we have the possibility, uh, I think, that uh, we're getting near a short-term peak. Here's a highlight of, uh, of that chart going into the 130 minute uh, time frame. And also uh, I'll bring your attention to the ADX on that level. Uh, first off, you can see the entire pattern is producing lower peaks on the ADX. I prefer the ADX uh, to other momentum indicators. Uh, it, a lot of folks don't watch it and uh, that's kind of a good thing in and of itself. You'll also notice that on each peak, we had lower peaks on the ADX, both internally as well as on the uh, on the uh, the larger uh, time frames. And one other thing to note here, again, here's our AD line and our wedge uh, heading up. There's a gap on the S&P cash around 1202. That coincides nicely with the top of our wedge, uh, if indeed we get up there, and. Uh, here's a close-up of that, and this is again yesterday's uh, data. And here's a projected, uh, uh, this is actually using today's data, and you can see the uh, uh, advanced decline line has keeled over a bit. Uh, ideally, we're going to go up to the top of this channel one last time. Uh, there's no guarantee of that, obviously, but uh, that's what I favor. And uh, assuming this bearish divergence holds, 
uh, that would be a, a very interesting juncture with that gap, the top of this wedge. The 11,258 area in the Dow may coincide with that, and indeed here's the Dow chart. And you can see the top of the wedge and that 11,258 area in the Dow uh, all come together, you know, perhaps a day out or so, uh, uh, if indeed we can hold and rally to one last uh, moderate new high. Uh, one caution here, one, we, the top could possibly be in, or obviously we could just blow right through those targets. What we're looking for here is for the market to go up, test that area, and fail, and uh, do so with uh, uh, negative breadth divergences. Now, if, if breadth uh, improves dramatically, if we go back above, say, the uh, 2400 area on the uh, advances on the NYSE, uh, or if we uh, power through here, if we rally, let's say, to uh, uh, a close above, uh, let's say, 11,280, 11,300, uh, that would obviously be a red flag, and, and this scenario would uh, have to be reevaluated. Um, here's the chart I did yesterday of the uh, Euro FX. And w what I noted then was that we have an ABC down, we have an ABC up. This is a recipe uh, for a possible triangle. And uh, when you have uh, corrective moves in both directions. So all I did here is I connected uh, these highs. I used that same angle down here. And uh, this is an updated chart through uh, uh, today's data recently. And uh, again, here's our ABC down, ABC back up, and a possible ABC down. And the whole pattern uh, so far is contracting. Uh, usually uh, contracting triangles are continuation patterns. And the implication of that is that the euro is going to make a new high and that the dollar is going to make a new low. Here's again the ADX basis, the uh, cash dollar, and you can see the declining peaks there. So obviously this market too is losing momentum to the downside, but uh, you know the, the possibility that we are indeed in a triangle uh, it, you know, indicates that a, a new low is certainly possible, and uh, we have to you know, put a couple more legs into the triangle to, uh, to indeed uh, I'll finish off that pattern, but uh, if we were to do that, make a moderate new low and hold, that would be a very nice indication that the dollar has indeed at least put in a short-term low. And finally, uh, here's gold. Uh, now, I've been wrong on gold. I'll be the first to admit that. It, it's really surprised me with its strength. We had a nice wedge-type pattern. So uh, a bit of caution here. Uh, we could be wrong on gold again, um, obviously, but that said, uh, we now have a very clear uh, five-wave pattern down. From there, we have a developing ABC back up. I've revised this from yesterday's charts. I've, uh, we dropped a little lower, so an A equals C rally would take us back to about 1362. That's also an area of, of previous price swings, and additionally, that's about a 62% retracement of this decline, and a likely, uh, a likely spot for this market to uh, uh, rollover if indeed this rally is corrective. Now, uh, once again, what we're looking for is for the market to go up to uh, or, or at least close to our target and then roll over. You don't want to just throw an order in ahead of this market. You want to see how it reacts when it gets there. But if we were to fall over from about 1362, uh, I would look at uh, selling it possibly. At any rate, that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.